How's everybody doing this evening? I like it. Ten of you are in a good mood. How's the rest of you? How's everybody doing this evening, huh? You know, we are here tonight to celebrate something that rarely gets celebrated in our society these days, and that is scholastic achievement. That is teachers and mentors, uh, and that's all of you. So tonight's a night of celebration, uh, and we hope you guys are excited for this evening. I want a lot of energy out of you, okay? Especially back here. I feel like back here. I want This table looks like you guys can be really rowdy. I want that. Party zone. Yeah? I don't know. What about over here? Are you guys going to challenge? Okay. These middle two rows, they look pretty tame. Well, on behalf of the Board of Directors of Youth Focus Incorporated, I would like to warmly welcome you to the 2014 awards program, recognizing commitment, accomplishment, and excellence for Santa Clara County. We are so happy to have each and every one of you with us tonight. We have an exciting night for you uh, planned. We're going to open up, though, by honoring America uh, with the singing of our national anthem as America has afforded us so many freedoms that allow us to join together like this. We want to pay tribute to the emblem of that freedom, the flag of the United States of America. Won't you please welcome Miss California State for 2013, Madison Wackerman, as she leads us in our national anthem. Maddie. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly speeding and the You know, I don't know how many of you are still watching uh, American Idol. Anybody? What? Yeah, one person. As Jennifer Lopez would say, I got the gooseies on that one. It's beautiful, Maddie. Thank you so much. That's Miss California State for 2013, Madison Wackerman. Big round of applause for Maddie. Thank you, Maddie. And now we'd like to welcome up our California State Ambassador for 2013, Horst Bauer, as he has the presentation of our Youth Focus Creed. Horst. Good evening, everybody. Where our youth are the symbols of hope, a promise for the future, the very strength of our tomorrow. And where our youth have the ability to grow towards greatness, to influence events, and to change lives in a special and miraculous way, provided they are given the opportunity to achieve and to accomplish. And where our society is enriched and strengthened by the positive energies and endeavors of young people of merit who strive to make a difference by utilizing their God-given talents and abilities in a productive manner for the benefit of their family and community. And where youth programming and recognition of excellence inspires our youth to greater heights of achievement and accomplishment for the betterment of their lives as well as the lives of others. And where 
youth programming and, rec and through commendation and recognition will be inspired to apply their youth training and experiences in ministering to the youth of the next decade, the youth of another generation, and the advancement of an ever better world in which to live. It is by these principles and values that Youth Focus Incorporated exists, dedicated to advancement of youth so that they might be inspired to enjoy a fuller and more meaningful life. Thank you, Horst, your California State Ambassador for 2013, Horst Bauer. So, once again, welcome on behalf of the Board of Directors of Youth Focus Incorporated. I'd like to welcome you. My name is Danny Lansford. I'll be your MC for this evening, uh, taking you through a lot of really, really exciting stuff. But, um, you know, as a principally uh, volunteer driven organization, uh, totally committed to the advancement of youth, Youth Focus Incorporated is proud. Uh, to sponsor this very prestigious event. You can tell it's a very prestigious event because I wore uh, my dressy Air Jordans for the <laughs> night. So that's how you can tell this is a, one of our more prestigious events. Um, the purpose of the Santa Clara County Youth Hall of Fame Salute to Youth Awards program is to recognize our Santa Clara County youth and youth mentors for their commitment to excellence, service to others, and their overall achievements and accomplishments as productive and contributing members of our community. It is the belief of Youth Focus Incorporated that by recognizing young people of merit on an annual basis, it will serve to foster and stimulate continued excellence among our county youth. Further, this form of recognition serves to motivate others to a stronger commitment in numerous areas of their lives as they look up to and admire their peers and role models. We extend our sincerest congratulations to our recipients this evening. That's all of you out there. Uh, unless you're a parent or a friend of one of those recipients, and we also congratulate you as well for all the support that you've given to these young people. But we want to extend our sincerest congratulations to every single one of you tonight. As young people of merit, you have made a difference in the lives of others. I want to say that again because that's what this is all about. As young people of merit, you have made a difference in the lives of others. Uh, some ways you may know, some ways you may not know. But just by being in this room tonight, uh, you have made a difference in the lives of your peers. We salute and commend you for all that you have accomplished and for wanting to strive for excellence in all that you do. And we thank you for your attendance and support of this evening's festivities and for, the helping making, uh, the help, and for helping to make this event a special moment in time for all of our recipients. You know, this is our, we do several events throughout the course of the year. For those of you who have been around the Youth Focus program before, this is one of about 10 different uh, programs that we do throughout the year. And this is by far my favorite one because it taps into something in society that so few other organizations uh, do, and that is giving recognition uh, for scholastic achievement and for our mentors in the community. In the young faces of Santa Clara County Youth Hall of Fame salute to youth inductees, you will find something we rarely see visible, and that is the future. The achievement of these young people of merit offer a glowing promise for tomorrow's world. And I know that we say that a lot of times where we see the future in our young people, but I think looking around this room tonight and as we go through these accomplishments that we're about to read this evening, I think you can truly see that the young people in this room are truly not only the future of this county, but the future of the state and the world and the universe. I'm not going to take it after that because I don't think, I don't know, we might not, we probably won't get there in your lifetime beyond the universe, but you could be the universe, we never know. The Santa Clara County Youth Hall of Fame program was founded in 1978. Think about that, 1978. For those of you keeping record at home, that's the year I was founded as well. It's true. Don't do the math, kids. The Salute to Youth program was begun in 1988, and both programs were founded for the purpose of recognizing our county youth for outstanding accomplishment, meritorious community service, and leadership contribution. Since the inception of this program, think about this, over 6,200 young people of merit have been recognized and rewarded for their positive endeavors and contributions to the betterment of our community. In addition to that, over $300,000 and educational scholarships have been, award, have been awarded for their positive endeavors and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, have been awarded our county youth for their meritorious performance and the vital role that they play serving as role models for others. Think about that, $300,000 through this program alone have been awarded. How about a big round of applause for that?
I do notice that every time I mention scholarships, the parents always clap louder than the kids. I don't know why that is. The Santa Clara County Salute to Youth Youth Hall of Fame is our organization's way of saying thank you uh, to these inspiring young people of accomplishment. Their outstanding contribution uh, bring a positive focus to our valley, strengthening the very fabric of community life. In short, all of that means is that what you guys do throughout your schools, throughout your communities, has made a positive impact on those around you and made this a better place to live. So we would now like to, Mr. S, actually, before we read the inductees, do you want to bless the food before it comes out? I'd like to welcome up the executive director of Youth Focus Incorporated, uh, Mr. Bill Smethers. He's, um, he's our Mr. S, and we love him. So uh, as the food comes out, we'd like to uh, invite him up for our in invocation. Well, first of all, thank you. I want to welcome you and congratulate you again. I know Danny has already done that, but you have no idea what a blessing this event is to us and what it means to us to be able to honor you and to recognize you and to salute you, as the program says. And um, so, I will have a closing message at the end of the program, but just wanted you to know that. And to our youth mentors, I cannot begin to tell you how much I esteem your community work and your investment in the young people today. Um, but as we got your um, um, resumes in, I was flabbergasted absolutely flabbergasted. So just congratulations and know how much you're appreciated and valued in our community. And with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we want to thank you for each nominee, for each person here that has contributed to the growth of our young people, uh, to our youth mentors, what a privilege and what a blessing it is to be able to um, say thank you to each and every person here. And the parents also, thank you for the investment you've made in your young people and just the encouragement that you have given them. And as we go through the evening, I want to thank each and every volunteer that has given their time and energy to the presentation of this uh, awards program, knowing that we could not do this without our volunteer staff and those that give so much endlessly to the Youth Focus program. And now as we are about to partake in this meal, bless it to our bodies that we might be ever stronger in providing programs that are meaningful to young people that are programs that benefit their lives, that um, provide scholarships for their endeavors, and bless the food to our bodies that we might be ever stronger in reaching out and touching the lives of others in a meaningful and purposeful um, way. And we ask this in your most holy and precious name, amen. Before I sit down, I have to talk about one other accomplishment. We talk about all the money that's been awarded to this program. Youth Focus in our 46 years has awarded nearly $1 million in scholarships to young people. And it's something that we take a great deal of pride in. So God bless you, have a good meal. So as we begin this evening's festivities, and uh, everybody looks like they're getting their salads at the moment, we're going to actually start out by recognizing each of our Salute to Youth and Youth Hall of Fame inductees this evening. So uh, when I call your name, I'm going to ask you to step away from your salad. 
put the fork down. Or actually, no, bring me the salad and a clean fork and I'll hold it for you. You can have it back when we're done. Uh, we're gonna ask each of you to come up and we're going to um, have, who's gonna present up here? We're gonna have our, oh, our team, awesome. So you're Miss California State, your California State Ambassador are gonna greet up here and we're gonna officially induct you uh, into, oh, and our team ambassador just as well. Awesome. Uh, we're gonna have you guys come up. Um, you're gonna come over here. They're gonna present you with uh, something and uh, we'll get a photo. Um, and then we'll have you quickly hurry back to your seat so we can continue to get everybody through. But we want to recognize each and every one uh, of our young people tonight um, individually and by name. I apologize in advance also if I uh, mess up the pronunciations of your name. That will happen. I'm a volunteer. <laughs> It's funny, whenever people start eating food, then they laugh less, or my jokes get worse. One of the two, I don't know which. All right. So now we would like to proudly present our 2014 Santa Clara County Salute to Youth and Youth Hall of Fame inductees. Won't you please come up? First, we begin with Yvette Admasu. Welcome up, Catherine Allen. Okay, hold it. Next, would you please welcome Victoria Avalar. I like Victoria's fan club. It, yeah. Now they're looking around at each other like, that wasn't me. Next, won't you please welcome Jennifer Barreto. Okay, here we go. Hold it. Nice. Thank you. Next, won't you welcome James Best. James couldn't be with us tonight. I'll accept this award on his behalf. <laughs> oh. Hold it. Send that to James, please. <laughs> Next up, won't you please welcome Brianna Betancourt. <laughs> Brianna here, anybody? Brianna? I'm kidding, because she got a really big ovation, so there she is. Next up, we welcome Kyle Blow. Next up, won't you please welcome Joshua Burke. Next up, won't you please welcome Vrishana Carpenter. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Okay. 
Okay, I look here ready. One, two, three. Welcome. Next up, won't you please welcome Matil Chakraborty. Here, do me a favor. Say your name for me in the microphone so I say it right. Matil. Matil. Say your last name. Chakraborty. Perfect. You said it absolutely perfect. Good job. Okay. Okay, here we go, guys. Hold it. One, two, three. Nice. Congratulations. You know, not only do we have some incredible inductees and honorees this evening, we also have some future inductees and honorees as well. Uh, I would like at this time to welcome up one of our future Salute to Youth Youth Hall of Fame honorees. Won't you please welcome Elizabeth. Come on, Elizabeth. Yeah. There she is. Let's do a picture. Do a picture with Miss Cal State. Okay, here we go. This looks great. One, two, three. Nice. Big round of applause for Elizabeth. <laughs> she came up a second ago and she said, How come you haven't called my name? So we absolutely thank you, Elizabeth, for being here. We're so happy to have you. Why don't you next please welcome up Sino Chewy. Our next honoree this evening, won't you welcome Dora Cisneros. So for those of you who are uh, honorees this evening, in case you haven't figured it out, we're going alphabetically by last name. So you can kind of figure out when it's about to be your turn. In case you want to, um, you know, get ready, put your fork down. I always feel bad when people come up and they're like mid-chew. <laughs> Next, won't you please welcome Kaylee, is it Quaylar? Quaylar? I may have said Kaylee, it's Kelly. I may have said Kaylee before. Kelly Quaylor. Next up, welcome Kevin Dam. <laughs> Kevin is kind of winning for the loudest applause so far. That was really good. Kevin, those guys love you. Anytime I need anytime I need some applause tonight, I'm just gonna say Kevin Dam. <laughs> it works every time. Next up, would you please welcome Spencer Davis? Next up, won't you please welcome Donovan Dix. Next, would you please welcome Christine Dong.
Next up, won't you please welcome Austin Drake. Austin, you should be on a soap opera someday. Yeah, with that name? Yeah. It's Austin Drake. I like the last name, right? Yes, yeah, awesome. I love it. Okay, guys, right here. One, two, and three. Hold it. Austin Drake. Oh. <laughs> Next up, would you please welcome Ricardo Duenas. Next up, would you please welcome Russell Escalada. Hi. He's like, too many cameras. Next up, would you please welcome Alyssa Foot. Jacob Gag Gagarin? Jacob Gagarin. Oh, and he's rocking a bow tie. Yes. I love it. This way. That one's a video. Okay, look professional. Here we go. Hold it. That one's a video there, so we just got you doing this. Next up, won't you please welcome Gina Gilson. And next, won't you please welcome Jocelyn Gasol. Next up, won't you please welcome Cassidy Ha. Super cool name too, I like this a lot. Won't you please welcome DeMont Hartnett. I like that. Next up, would you please welcome Salma Hegab. Next, won't you welcome Romel Jimenez. <laughs> Another good round of applause over there. That's great. Okay, guys, look good. Move over a little bit this way, good. You're going to have three, one, two, three. Hold it. Nice. Good job. Good job. Okay, guys, 
Next up, won't you please welcome Kayla Katzman. Welcome uh, Taylor Kunkel. <laughs> and next, won't you please welcome Stacy Lou? Next up, won't you please welcome Arsenio Manuel the Fourth. You guys got some of the coolest names out there. I love it. Okay, here we go. Ready. I'm actually gonna write a soap opera script, and it's gonna include all of your names. Arsenio Manuel the Fourth walks into the room only to find Austin Drake. He turns to DeMont Hardnett and he says, have you seen Kevin Dam? You guys would watch this show, right? No? <laughs> I wouldn't either. I'm a horrible writer. Next up, won't you please welcome Gina Marshana. Next up, won't you please welcome Craig Miller. And then in the next scene of our soap opera, it would be, it would be this next person here. It would say, and they turn around to find none other than Antonio Nazario. Okay, 
Okay, this looks fantastic. Hold it. Nice job. <laughs> Next up, won't you please welcome Samantha Rudd. Won't you please walk? Well, who do you think it is? Huh? Anybody? Next, won't you please welcome Stephanie Rudd. Hey, Samantha. Samantha, stay up here. I want to get a photo of all the sisters. If you are, in fact, related, I'm not sure. Any relation? This might be the first time, as salute to Youth Youth Hall of Fame, that we've ever had triplets uh, as Youth Hall of Fame inductees. So this is pretty cool. So why don't you welcome up the third of the Rudd sisters, Sydney Rudd. It might be a record, I don't know. Is that a record? That is a record. Breaking records. Come over here, grab an individual photo, and then we'll do the sisters. That's awesome. Okay, here we go. Looks nice. One, two, and three. Nice shot. Come on in, girls. Everybody. <laughs> and next up, won't you please welcome Eric Snyder. And next, won't you please welcome Aku Sorensen. And our next inductee this evening, won't you please welcome David Soriano Jr. Okay. Okay. I see what y'all are doing. That's good. <laughs> David Soriano Jr. I think you used all your energy on the first one. Next up, won't you please welcome Marisha Zubia. So won't you please welcome Nishant Subramanium. <laughs> and next, won't you please welcome Alex Sukala. Next, won't you please welcome Tim Sukala. No relation. I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding there, brothers. Okay, Tim, here we go. Looks nice. Hold it. Come get a brother photo. Get a brother photo. Come on, get in. And next, won't you please welcome Roman Sewell. cool when we have siblings who get honored on the same evening. That's always, that's very cool. You know, we have the, the Rudd sisters in the back and Alex and Sam up front here. 
the reason I think it's so cool is because my sister always got cool awards and I got to watch. So I think it's cool when all the siblings get awards. I'm not bitter, I promise. Next up, won't you please welcome Brian Tran. So won't you please welcome Anne Trin. Okay, here we go. Looks very nice. One, two, three. And next up, won't you please welcome Christian Van Ejik. Also sporting the bow tie. Nicely done. Okay, move in a little bit. Okay, here we go. This looks excellent. And next, would you please welcome Kimberly Vernon. Soap opera. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Next up, won't you please welcome Cassandra Villacana? Yeah. Okay. Is it Cassandra? Okay. I was waiting for you to get Santa? Santa? Oh, thank you. Okay. Here we go. This looks great. Hold it. Nice. And next, would you please welcome Ronak Verdi? Next up, would you please welcome Tiffany Wolf? Your last name is Wolf, that's so awesome. Next up, would you please welcome Novia Wong? Next up, won't you please welcome Michelle Shu? You guys got awful quiet all of a sudden. Okay, Michelle, look pretty. Here we go now. One, two, and Kevin Dam. You guys are slacking over there. Is the food really good? Yeah? They're like, we can't talk, we have food in our mouth. Please welcome Francisco Yanez. Yeah. Next up, won't you please welcome Joyce Yin. Uh, let me 
Okay. Here we go now. It looks nice. Ready? One, two, and three. Congratulations. Next question, please welcome Sammy Elamad. Not in alphabetical order. Sorry, Sammy. I missed you. And our final recipient this evening goes out to the AVID Junior Class. How about one more big round of applause for all of our Youth Hall of Fame? Salute to youth inductees. So a couple of notes while you uh, continue with your meals. First of all, for all of our young people who came up and got their photos taken, you probably saw one of these great little cards on uh, your table when you came in. You have the ability to actually go online and purchase your photos from this evening uh, up here with Miss California State and the California State Ambassador. So make sure you do that. Great keepsakes for you to take home. Professional photography the, does a fantastic job. Have a big round of applause for our photographer and our videographer tonight. They've done so much for us. We really appreciate that. And can we also, too, uh, take a moment to thank all of these gentlemen going around the room, serving all of our meals tonight. They've done... Three Flames Restaurant takes great care of us every single year. Imagine being a server at a restaurant and trying to come around to tables and then have people constantly running up and down the aisles while you're trying to serve the food. They do a fantastic job, so thank you so much uh, to all these hardworking young men out here tonight. Appreciate that. Now, parents and guests, I have to um, rebuke you. That's because that was the lamest applause I have ever heard for the young people that are being recognized and rewarded tonight. So let's try it again. You know, I, I, don't, I don't understand our society. We are so afraid to applaud and to acknowledge and to reward young people. And that should be the highlight of your life. My goodness. You know, and you're, you are approaching the, the point of becoming empty nesters and so I just um, encourage you, and I'll give you a little talk about that at the end, but I just want you to know that the purpose of this program, the purpose of your young people, and the purpose of an award ceremony is to make sure your young people are applauded and recognized so I thank you for that last applause. It's partially my fault. I should know better than to ask you to applause while you have food. Forks in your hand, eating food. It's not a good time for applause. You can stab yourself with a fork that way. Be careful. Safety first. You know, we are so proud of each and every one of these young people who came up here tonight. You know, I think a lot of times when you go to um, ceremonies like this, uh, awarding our young people, um, 
not always do they call out every single young person's name individually. And that's why we do that is because we want to recognize each and every one of you specifically tonight. We have a lot of other awards that we're going to give out throughout the course of this evening. Uh, but it's so important um, that each and every one of you know how special your accomplishments are um, and how being here tonight uh, really, truly uh, has impacted not only your schools, your communities, your homes, your family, uh, but all of us as well. So we really appreciate you um, and congratulations each and every one of you. Uh, you can now forever, it's a really, it's kind of a really cool thing because we're actually gonna hear from somebody in just a moment um, who went through this program, I guess he'll tell us how long ago. I'll let you tell if you should. But uh, who went through this program and, and, and when, you, when you go through this program, you're part of a little fraternity along the way you'll, you'll be able to say, uh, I, was, I was a member of the Youth Hall of Fame or uh, I was, a, I was a, salute, a salute to youth. Uh, inductee um, so you know now and forever that's something that no one can ever take away from you so that's very very exciting we actually I think I think at this time we have some music is that true while you guys finish meals yeah. you guys want me to sing <laughs> you know what's funny about that is that the people who know me laugh the loudest <laughs> He said, that's hilarious. No, we don't want you to sing. Uh, I think we have a young man who's gonna come up and sing a couple of musical numbers for us though, and he's one of our uh, inductees from tonight. Would you guys like to hear a few musical selections? So, where'd he go? Where's our, where's our, where's our singer for the evening, where is he? Tell, come on up here. Because I, I want you to say your name again for me, because I messed it up earlier. <laughs> say, say your name for us. And how old are you? Ten. You're ten years old. And you have songs that you're going to sing in front of all these people tonight. Yeah. What songs are you going to sing for us? Just Give Me a Reason. Just Give Me a Reason? All right. Do you guys want to hear a little musical selection? All right, take it away, buddy. Why don't you sing for us while we have our dinner?
He was like six or seven. You're gonna be huge, dude. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna forget the soap opera bit. I'm gonna write a musical. It's just gonna be you only. Like the whole, it's a one man musical. You're the whole show. Sound good? One more round of applause for Mark. Give it up, though. I love you, man. Great job. Fantastic, dude. Dude, how good is that kid? He's 10 years old. I want to be you when I grow up. I'm serious. You know, I talked a little bit about, uh, a little bit earlier about um, seeing the future in all of our young people up here. First of all, I think we just got a glimpse of that. How big, how big is that little guy going to be? He's going to be huge. And I know that each and every one of you in this room right now represent our future and represent um, something significant within our society, something significant within our community. And this program has fostered so many young individuals throughout the years who have gone on to do really incredible things. Uh, and we're so proud of the legacy and the heritage that's come through this program. We're so proud of our history. We're so proud of our future with all of you. Uh, but tonight we have the opportunity to hear uh, from one of those very special young people. Um, I know what you're going to say, Pew. You're, you're, you're always young when it comes to salute to youth. It's got youth in the title, man. So I want to introduce for you uh, Dr. Uh, Piyush Srivastava. I'm not, I'm not going to say it correctly, I apologize. And you know what? I've practiced. That's the sad part. <laughs> But he is uh, a former Santa Clara County. He is our, uh, one of our former Salute to Youth Ambassadors. Now, Piyush graduated from Leland High School. Any Leland High School people in the house? Yeah? yeah? Did any of you have uh, Mrs. Lansford for math? Yeah, just one? She's a good teacher? That's my wife, Mrs. Lansford, there. I'm Mr. Lansford. But Piyush graduated from Leland High School. He was awarded uh, the top scholarship and became the Santa Clara County Salute to Youth Ambassador. Now Dr. Uh, Piyush Srivastava. Yes. He's a graduate of Berkeley, Stanford, and USC. A lot of people want to graduate from one college. A lot of people want to graduate from one good college. <laughs> Piyush was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do three really, really good ones. That was Berkeley, Stanford, and USC. His specialty is oncology. Uh, he is now on staff at Kaiser Permanente in Walnut Creek. We are so proud to introduce uh, Youth Focus alum uh, and our former uh, Salute to Youth Ambassador in Santa Clara County, Dr. Piyush Srivastava. <laughs> Thank you, Danny, for that beautiful introduction. And actually, my name is pronounced correctly, Sri Vastava, so that's actually fantastic. Um, as I was growing up, I was used to catch myself saying Sri Vastava, but now I'm much to the happiness of my father and now correctly saying my last name is Sri Vastava. So thanks, Danny. I'm truly honored to be here, standing in front of you, in this most amazing and inspirational night. I vividly remember my salute to youth, the Youth Hall of Fame, 22 years ago in 1992. It was absolutely amazing. I could not understand the impact that that night and my connection with Youth Focus would have on me as a person and on my career professionally. I look at all of you and all the successes that you've done, and I'm truly amazed at the potential talent in this room to be able to change your communities and to be able to change the world. Now, I was sitting here looking, thinking about all you guys and all the people and all the accomplished youth who had sat here before you. 
And it's amazing to me that all of you have tapped into your inner spirit, harnessed that, and actually accomplished great achievements. Times have changed, and with changing times, circumstances have changed, and life stressors have changed. But you all seem to tap into your inner passion, engage in meaningful activities, and change the community you're in. And I think that's what unites all of you here today, is your inner passion, your ability to tap into that and to do good with the community. So way back in 1992, I remember myself sitting here and thinking about what my inner passion was. And I learned from the Youth Focus and the Youth Hall of Fame to be able to provide respect and compassion to others. The mentorship, the love, and the compassion in this room, in my opinion, cannot be found anywhere else. So I hope all of you here tonight harness that, engage in it, and bring it to yourselves as you embark on your successful futures. I was very lucky to continue finding my inner passion when I was awarded an internship of a lifetime in Calcutta, India. I got a one-year stint working at the Missionaries of Charity with Mother Teresa. Has anyone heard of the Missionaries of Charity or been involved with them? It's Mother Teresa's um, livelihood, and that's the hospital that she has built across the, across the world, actually. So I had a one-year internship with her, and I never realized the impact that year would have on me professionally and how it would reinforce some of the ideas and principles I learned while being with Youth Focus. I had a six-day work week with Mother Teresa. One day I worked in the orphanage, two days I worked in the leprosy colony, and three days I worked in Kali Ghat, which is the home for the dying. Has anyone here heard about the home for the dying? It's actually what Mother Teresa is really famous for. Interestingly enough, I decided that I was going to do a lot of reading before I went on my one-year internship, and there was a lot of Western criticism about Mother Teresa and her donations to the home for the dying. And if anybody is here has been to India or in any impoverished country, you'll truly understand that people die of treatable diseases, infections, poverty. So the criticism was that Mother Teresa is receiving this money to, uh, to help the people of the country, but she's using it in the home for the dying rather than in a vaccination program or, or antibiotics for people who might have treatable illnesses. And being out of college and sort of having this naive look on life, I sort of understood that a little bit. That made sense to me. So, you know, if Mother Teresa is getting this money, why wouldn't she use that to help people who can actually live rather than spend it on those people who are actually dying? It wasn't until three-fourths into my internship year did I really truly understand the significance of it. So each day when I worked at Kali Ghat, which was home for the dying, I had to roam the streets of Calcutta in the morning looking for people who might be lying on the streets. They were too ill to move, and they were too ill to be noticed by people who were passing by. So one of the days, I was walking by a mound of trash that was probably about 40 or 50 feet high, and when I was walking by, I could hear some moaning and groaning as I was walking, and I looked inside the mound of trash, and through a little peephole, I could see two eyes glaring at me. So I asked one of my colleagues to help move the trash so we can get this person out, and we pulled him out. The stench that was coming from his head wound was so intense that my friend and my colleague actually vomited when he smelled it. And we looked at the wound in his head. It had gone to the surface where his skull was, and we could see maggots walking around. We knew he needed help. So we brought him back to the Kali Ghat, or the home for the dying, because our goal with him was to restore his health. So my job was to take care of him while I was there, working at the home for the dying. Every day I would disinfect his wound, I would dress his wound, and I would massage his bones. His bones and his, his skin, he was so frail that you could actually see the bones through his skin. So he re received a lot of relief when we would massage his bones, so I would massage each and every one of his bones that would provide him relief. But the interesting thing about this man, who we later found out to be, his name was Abhishek, was that he seemed to be extremely ungrateful. He constantly would be yelling at me, constantly yelling at the other volunteers. He seemed to be very cranky. In fact, he yelled at Mother Teresa once or twice through the whole process. As I was working with him on a daily basis, I sort of became frustrated too because I felt all my efforts were not being helpful to him, were not actually being appreciated. And one day I was going along and doing my daily routine. Abhishek's head was on my lap and I was massaging his head, and I was going on to his shoulders and to his upper arms, and he lifted his chin, and he looked in my eyes, 
and he smiled, he said thank you, and he passed away. That was a life transforming moment to me. And actually, I remember this very well, and I tell Mrs. G this all the time. My head flashed back to youth focus, and the compassion and respect I learned for giving people was just translated right there to my interactions with Abhishek. At that point, I truly understood the meaning of Mother Teresa and the home for the dying. Right? She believes, and I have soon seemed to understand, that throughout our lives, our dignity is taken away from us. Whether someone says something to us, whether actions happen to us, or whether we're overcome by illness. The greatest gift that we can give as a human being is that dignity back. Right? So Mother Teresa started Kali Ghat, or Home for the Dying, to reinstill and maintain dignity for those who had lost it by circumstance, poverty, or illness. So our job was there on a daily basis to reinstill and maintain dignity while they faced death. It was a truly amazing, life-changing experience for me. So when I left there, I knew I wanted to do something along those lines, and I thought medical school would be the way to go. I wanted to be a physician, but not only did I want to be a physician, I wanted to be a healer as well. Yes, it is true, as an oncologist, my job is to treat and to cure cancer. But I think just as important as doing that is to reinstill and maintain dignity for patients and their family members who might have been stricken by this illness or might have lost it through our medical interventions. I think that's the greatest gift I can give my patients. A lot of my patients unfortunately pass away from their illness, but I think the greatest gift as our oncology team can do is to maintain and reinstill that dignity as that process happens. You are among the best youth in Santa Clara County. You have been chosen to sit here because you have tapped into your inner passion. I encourage you to continue to tap into that inner passion and change your community and change your world around you. I know I discovered my inner passion in 1992, 22 years ago, sitting in a similar room just as this, listening to all these wonderful things people have done around me. I continue to tap in that inner passion and I continue to make myself a better person and I continue to hopefully make my community a better, for, community a better place to live. Everyone here is a winner, so congratulations to all of you. Feel the energy, feel the support, feel the love, feel the compassion, and feel the mentorship, and use that as you embark on your successful futures. Once again, thank you so much for the honor of being here for this inspiring day, and once again, congratulations and good luck to all of you as you embark on your future. Thank you so much, Piyush. You know, um, you know, just to listen to that story, to listen to the work that you got to do with Mother, Mother Teresa, who was probably one of the most giving, loving, compassionate people this entire planet has ever known. You know, we talk about how we look around this room and we see the future. And when you get to see it through Piyush's eyes and how he sat in that same seat that you're sitting right now, and from there was inspired to go out and make a difference in the world, what I would challenge each of our young inductees with tonight is for you to start seeing your own future. And I know at this age, it's, it's difficult. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I was your age. Um, and I, it, it turned out that I was, ended up doing something professionally that I had never planned on doing. But what I wanna challenge you with tonight is this. Your future is what you make it. You have the ability to become whatever you want. You have the ability to change your world locally, and you have the ability to change your world globally. As Piyush just so eloquently stated, you are amongst the top students, the top contributors to society, 
this entire county has to offer. And when you think about how many young people are in this county and how many young people continuously give around you, how many times do you go to school and you say, you know what, so-and-so is doing some really great things. We're surrounded by great talent, but yet here you are. Here you are. So I challenge this room. I would love 20 years from now to be standing at this microphone having one of you come up and tell your story about how today a small seed was planted that you decided to go out and change the world. But I also want to challenge you with this. No matter what you do, no matter what you decide to do professionally, no, whatever, no matter what you decide to do for your family or for your community or for your society, I want to challenge you to do it with love. I want to challenge you to spread love into the world because if you come at anything, whether that be work, home, family, with an attitude of love first and giving first, you will never fail. You will never fail. But tonight we celebrate each and every one of you for all of your individual accomplishments that you've already made. And I can't wait to celebrate the ones that you're going to make next. How about another big round of applause, though, for our speaker tonight, Piyush? Thank you so much. You know, we have um, some, some awards that we're going to actually start giving out here very shortly. Uh, and I want to take a moment to thank and recognize some members of our board of directors of Youth Focus Incorporated. These, these individuals, they work uh, tirelessly to make sure that we have events like this to put on uh, throughout the course of the year. Of course, we have our executive director, Mr. Smethers, who came up and spoke for us earlier. We have Pat Burke, Tom Galloway, uh, Suzette Galloway, uh, Brittany Lansford, Coletto Banyan. Um, several of our board members here. But I want to talk about one, one man, uh, our president, uh, Jim Guido. He's sitting over here to my left. Now this is a man, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you, sir. He's the handsome fellow right up front here. What I was just talking about, about how whatever you do, I want you to do it with love. This is a man who inspires that and who, who lives that every single day. I want to read just a little bit about Mr. Guido because we uh, are, uh, you know, one of the awards that we have tonight is, in fact, uh, our James J. Guido Spirit of Youth um, Award. Uh, but I want to read a little bit about the man himself because this man uh, has done so much for so many, including me uh, personally. Uh, but Jim has been an outstanding civic leader, uh, diligently working towards the betterment of his community. Uh, he has pledged his efforts to a number of community causes and organizations with a strong commitment to fundraising, which has provided the resources necessary uh, to reach and touch the lives of others. Jim has been an outstanding role model to youth uh, through his tireless efforts, positive direction, and personal involvement. He was instrumental in formulating and starting the San Jose PAL program, uh, in which he served as executive director from 1969 to 1981. These three, these, uh, through these years, he touched the lives of hundreds of young people and inspired and motivated them to greater heights of accomplishment and achievement. Jim was instrumental in establishing and constructing uh, the, the PAL Stadium and in acquiring 17 acres that were donated uh, by Emma Proust to develop as a permanent recreational field for youth, a complex where young people would utilize their time, energies, and talents in a productive manner, enhancing their skills and citizenship and becoming better equipped to serve in their adult lives. Not only has he given back to the community emotionally, uh, he's also uh, planted, literally, planted uh, fields for the betterment of the community around him. During his professional career, Jim served as a devoted public servant for 25 years as a member of the San Jose Police Department, uh, protecting and safeguarding his community as a devoted officer. During his tenure in the department, he served as a supervisor of the Youth Services Bureau and liaison to the Boys City, excuse me, Boys City Boys Club, again, touching and motivating youth uh, Jim spent a great deal of his professional career speaking throughout the community on issues such as substance abuse, juvenile laws, to better acquaint the community uh, with vital issues of significance to both youth and parents. 
Jim Const consistently promoted police work during his tenure with the police department and was instrumental in forming the Police Athletic Law Enforcement Unit, motivating uh, numerous boys and girls to actively pursue careers as peace officers. Uh, Jim, along with the Almaden Valley Rotary Club in 1974, started the Charlie Wiedemeyer Santa Clara County All-Star Football Game, rewarding athletes of achievement and accomplishment for their dedication uh, to their academic talents. How many of you guys have friends who have been a part of that Charlie Wiedemeyer All-Star Football Game? Are you in it? Yes. You're going to be playing. All right. What's that? 40th year. This is the 40th year of the Charlie Wiedemeyer football game. This man up here, Mr. Guido, uh, he's, he's, he's who you think for that football game, along with many others, of course, but, but Mr. Guido um, started the Charlie Wiedemeyer football game. So Jim has been recognized by the California State Senate, the California State Assembly, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary of state, the county board of supervisors, uh, the San Jose City Council, the mayor of San Jose, the optimist as optimist of the year, the veterans of foreign wars, the Almaden Valley Rotary Club, the California State Scholarship Association, and has been recognized as Rotarian of the Year for his work in Rotary. How about that for a list of recognitions for our Mr. Guido right here? James J. Guido is one of those unsung heroes in our, you know, you hear that. You hear people say that, that this person is an unsung hero. Um, but this man, it, it really is absolutely true about. Uh, he's one of those unsung heroes in our community who has dedicated much of his adult life to serving and mentoring youth. He is an individual who has made an extraordinary contribution of time, energy, and love devoted towards serving the youth and citizenry of our, of our county. As a result his effort, of his efforts and contributions, the young people of our community and the citizenry as a whole enjoy a more meaningful and rewarding life. In 1991, a testimonial dinner was held in Jim's honor, recognizing him for his outstanding contributions. That night, the James J. Guido Salute to Youth Awards were established so that there could be a perpetual and ongoing awards program in recognition of Jim's contributions to all of our community life. I met Mr. Guido when I was 16 years old for the first time. Uh, two things I learned right away. One. Uh, he has an incredible handshake, and he will break at least three bones in your hand when he shakes it. Two, it's a man with a heart of gold. Uh, he is somebody who uh, continuously, year after year, uh, gives of his own time uh, so that the people in our community uh, are, 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 are better, uh, have a better place in which to live. So. Uh, Mr. Guido, just uh, as always, I want to say thank you so much for all of your hard work. I want to say thank you for all you do, not only for Youth Focus, but um, for, for our entire community. Uh, please give one big round of applause to Mr. James J. Guido. Actually, there's three things you need to know, Mr. Ba Mr. Guido. He's also one of the funniest people you'll ever meet. Yeah. When we have when we have board meetings, it's well, it's funny. You know, as I said earlier, one thing that makes uh, this program very unique is that we like to take time um, to celebrate not only our young people of merit but also our mentors as well. Um, our schools are made up of so many hard-working uh, individuals who give back to the students of their community. How many of you young people in this room today are here because uh, a teacher has touched your life in some special way throughout your time in school? Only two of you? None of you guys like your teachers? Let me ask that a better way. Let me ask that a better way. If you have had Throughout your entire high school career, if you have had a teacher who you will remember as you move forward throughout your life and you'll look back on the lessons that they taught you as you were going through high school, raise your hand really high for me. Raise your hand. That's better. You know, being a teacher, 
being a teacher is uh, probably one of the most, um, geez, uh, undervalued, underappreciated. Um, I mean, the list goes on. You know, I, I married a teacher. I married a teacher, and I see firsthand how, first of all, how hard teachers work. My wife wakes up every morning an hour before I do. An hour. Well, now we have a baby. She wakes up six hours before I do. But she wakes up every morning an hour before I do. She gets home every day an hour after I do. And she gets paid not nearly what she's worth. Teachers should be our highest paid profession in the country, if you ask me. No, no offense to oncologists. Because what you do is also really, really great. But, but when you think about it, uh, you know, not only... Uh, think, how about this? Think about it this way. Without teachers, we might not have had this incredible oncologist in this room. Huh? But back to my original point, sorry I got a little off track there. The, one of the things that I love about our, our program tonight is that we don't only, only want to recognize our young people for all of their accomplishments, we want to recognize those mentors as well. So we have a couple of uh, uh, youth mentors tonight that we're going to honor. And I want to read a little bit of their bios. I'm not going to read the whole thing because these are, um, they're, they're really, really great, um, but they're also really long. So I want to make sure uh, that we um, have time to celebrate all of our young people. So our first, our first mentors this evening uh, are Mason Kamant and Doug Santana. Mason and Doug, I'm going to read about you a little bit, and then I want you guys to come on up here. Mason and Doug uh, rightfully deserve a team nomination for this honor. So they have been the heart and soul of the Exemplary Department of Performing Arts at Arch Archbishop Mitty High School. Uh, in Mr. Kamant's 15 years as a music educator at Mitty, uh, 12 serving as the Director of Performing Arts, he has exemplified every quality of a true educator and mentor. Uh, in Mr. Santana's 15 years at Mitty, 11 as the Director of Drama, he has matched his colleagues' passion for education and the arts. Uh, they are an ambitious, compassionate, creative, enthusiastic, hardworking, and passionate team. Their students are privileged to have uh, two such worthy performing arts players uh, share their expertise as actors, singers, musicians, and directors. Under their combined direction, the Department of Performing Arts at Archbishop Mitty uh, School High School has uh, grown exponentially during the past decade in both student involvement and accolades. Mr. Kamant has uh, won two San Jose Stage Top Honor Awards for Best Musical Direction for his work on Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling. It's a fantastic show, isn't that? The Putnam County Spelling Bee? It's a great show. Uh, he has also been nominated twice for Best Direction. Uh, Mr. Santana has worked out, uh, work, work, uh, I'm sorry, has won two out of three nominations by San Jose Stage Top Honor Awards for Best Direction for his work on Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and uh, The Drowsy Chaperone. In the past five years alone, uh, their work has compiled an outstanding 31 San Jose Top Honor Award nominations. That's pretty incredible, 31 nominations, that's great. Do you guys think that's all? No, it says right here, that's not all. The accolades continue to shine their way with an incomparable 39 youth National Theater Award nominations in, the, in uh, just the past five years alone. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and The Drowsy Chaperone both took, uh, both took home the very impressive prize of outstanding production from the Youth National Theater Awards. 
Under their leadership, countless talented students have had the opportunity to take the stage by storm and be generously rewarded for their work. Three of their protégés have taken the title of Best Actor or Best Actress at the San Jose Top Honor Awards. Some of these students have either performed at the Spotlight uh, Jimmy Awards in New York City. Very cool. However, beyond the glitz and glam of countless nominations and awards, doesn't that get old, the countless nominations and awards? <laughs> beyond the glitz and glam of all that, the achievement they are most proud of is the number of truly talented individuals they have helped to bridge the gap to university education with acceptance into competitive theater programs. The alumni have joined the rosters at such esteemed universities as CCM, NYU, UCLA, and USC, just to name a few. Although all of these young people clearly have immense talent and drive, surely one could attribute the lessons they have learned about communication, perseverance, self-confidence, teamwork, and tolerance to this celebrated duo. They have served as mentors for so many, and I have no doubt the Department of Performing Arts is only the start of an excellent journey. It is time for their turn in the spotlight and a small return for the exceptional work that they have done for the stars in our community. Won't you please join me in welcoming um, our mentor recognition tonight, our mentor team duo. And you know, the performing arts. Sorry, I pulled a Mr. S right there, didn't I? <laughs> you are rubbing off on me, sir. That's good. Let's bring him up first, and then I'll say what I was going to say. Please welcome uh, some of our mentor uh, recipients tonight, Mason Kimont and Doug Santana. What I was going to say was, you know, the arts, the arts in our schools are, are, are also such a, 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 such a huge <laughs> program, such an important program, and the way that, one more big round of applause, thank you both so much. And you know, the, the, the one of the things that you know we're just so proud of in our in our program as well is is how we celebrate the arts here, um, and we've had we've had young people go through this program who have gone on to uh, do pretty incredible things in the entertainment industry. Um, but really, that's not what it's about. Um, it's not about accomplishments. It's not about um, being a backup singer for MC Hammer. Um, <laughs> does everybody know Anthony Butler? Do you guys know Mr. Butler? Anthony Butler is, uh, he's one of my best friends in the world. He, um, he sang at my wedding. Uh, he's kind of my, he's sort of like my brother. Um, known him, I've known him since I was about 16 years old as well. Did you guys know he used to sing backup for MC Hammer? Do you guys know that? Yeah. I know you know that because he's obviously too legit to quit. So, MC Hammer joke, the kids don't get it. But you know, that's not what the arts are about. They're not about uh, the accolades. They're not about, uh, you know, who sings with Justin Bieber or MC Hammer. No one wants to sing with Bieber, but they used to. Anyways, um, you know, again, it's about giving back. It's about giving back to your community. It's about giving back. It's a give, giving a little piece of yourself to your audience or giving a little piece of yourself to a character. Um, and you know, those uh, individuals who continue uh, to teach the arts to our young people um, are setting them up for such an incredible life, for such an incredible journey, um, and for skills, uh, soft skills, that will take them into uh, the working world uh, no matter what profession they choose. So once again, thank you for all the work that you do with the arts. We can't uh, have enough focus on the arts. Our next, uh, our next mentor here that we want to uh, recognize is uh, Mark Lopez. So, 
Mark Lopez has been a longtime mentor to youth in the San Jose community. His tireless efforts for many years have made a huge impact on the lives of many youth. Mark first became engaged with youth in 1992. As a high school sophomore, Mark completed a volunteer project at his childhood elementary school by facilitating a class lesson in a second grade classroom. His style and rapport with the young children won the attention of the school administration that he was offered a position to work as a teacher's aide. The Washington School community is a low-income area just south of downtown San Jose, predominantly with Latino families. In the fall of 1992, an idea of starting an after-school homework club was proposed by the second grade teacher. Mark became involved as a volunteer to coordinate the sports component and helping students with their homework. The program had an average of 15 to 20 students. Mark volunteered every day of the entire 92-93 school year at the Club Success Homework Club and was awarded the Pioneer High School Student of the Month Award in May 1993. I think that's a really key point to, to talk about for a second. Volunteered every day. These teachers stay around. After teaching a full day of class, if they get there at 7 a.m. and they don't leave until 5, they stay around after and they volunteer their time not getting paid for it, but because it's the right thing to do for the kids. And Mark is an example of that. In the fall of 1993, a new school principal was hired, uh, a new school principal hired Mark to, to coordinate the after school homework club. Mark was able to utilize um, the help of six tutors, uh, which included his brother and sister. Wow. That's using your resources, nicely done. The program continued to grow uh, and began to receive City of San Jose funding, uh, then serving an average of 35 students. In 1999, the program became, um, sorry, the program began to, re I, I, this light is right in my eyes and I keep losing my place. You don't care. They're like, just read the words, man. <laughs> the program began to receive state funding and was renamed to the San Jose Learns. Uh, Mark, Mark continued to direct the program until 2006, serving an average of 120 to 150 students every year. The Washington After School Program became a model program in the city of San Jose. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead here because, honestly, this is fantastic stuff, Mark. Uh, it, let's skip ahead to 2008. In 2008, Mark was offered a position to work as a senior recreation leader for the city of San Jose. He was assigned to work with teens at the Los Paseos Youth Center in San Jose. Mark, with his passion of working with the youth, allowed him to create a successful program in his new neighborhood by providing a safe, vibrant, and active youth center. He was able to establish a youth leadership council, hip-hop dance classes, summer youth camps, youth dances and special events, which also included a haunted house and national night out. It sounds like no one was left out in Mark's endeavors here. In 2010, Mark was hired by Catholic Charities of Santa Clara County to manage the Coral After School Program at Seven Trees Elementary School, located at another low-income area of San Jose. Mark, who had become known as Mr. Mark, was able to create a very successful program, which was embraced by the entire school staff, parents, children, and community. The program had over 200 registered participants, the most of any Coral program in the city. In 2012, Mark Lopez made a full circle and returned to the Washington community now as a site manager for the Washington United Youth Center and Spartan Keys Neighborhood Action Center. During his time in his new role, Mark, Mark has been able to revive the youth center, bringing new programs, building improvements, and rebuilding partnerships that benefit the youth of Washington uh, community. In 2013, Mark was able to bring back the annual Haunted House and Festival for the 20th year. 20 years, it's incredible. Returning the event to its original location and re-engaging a new generation of youth to be a major part of the community events and neighborhood projects. Mark has always gone above and beyond in any role that he takes. His heart and passion has always been to make the difference in the youth and children's lives. Growing up in a low income community with very little role models, Mark has accepted the responsibility to being that much needed role model and providing opportunities for at risk youth and deter them away from the gang lifestyle that still exists in that community. Many of the young that he, many of the youth that he has worked with have gone on to become successful adults. Mark has been very instrumental in providing the guidance and mentorship to these at-risk youth, and his countless, countless hours have been paid off. He is well respected in the San Jose community, and to this day can, continues to be a strong leader and advocate for youth. You know, this is a person who 
who didn't have a role model growing up. And so he wanted to be that for other people. Uh, and you know, when we talk about doing things with love, I think this is an example of somebody who has embodied that fully, heart and soul. Uh, we uh, are so honored tonight to have you with us. Please welcome, big round of applause for Mark Lopez. You know, I, w I wish we had more time tonight because the rest of, uh, of that bio uh, is pretty incredible. Um, but one thing uh, is absolutely certain that no matter what step along the way, uh, Mark always had an outward uh, facing gaze. He was looking towards the lives of others and how he could help the lives of others and change the lives of others and the lives of his community. Uh, and I'll tell you what, if we had uh, more people uh, like, like this man here, uh, this world will be a better place. So thank you so much for all that you've done. Before we move on from our mentors, I just want to say one more thing. For those of you young people in this room today, I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to make sure that you take time. Next time you're in your classroom, next time you have a moment, whether it be at a football game, football's over, right? Yeah. Whether it be at a basketball game, is basketball over, baseball game, <laughs> hockey, yeah, sure. wherever it be, wherever you see uh, your teachers, I want, you to, I want you to stop for a moment and say thank you. Um, I want you to say thank you for all they've done for you and uh, thank you for all the stuff that you don't know that they've done for you. Because um, it's a lot, I promise you that. But once again, big round of applause for all of our mentors tonight. Thank you guys so much. We also have... Can I have one of these? We also have... Yep. So we also have uh, these um, amazing awards for all of uh, the, the teachers in here or the mentors in here that nominated a young person this evening. We want to recognize you as well for taking the time out to invest in the lives of our youth to give back to those individuals and for having them be with us tonight. So we have these awards for you. Um, we're not gonna go through all of them individually because there's about 40 something of them up here, uh, but we do want uh, you to know that we have some special awards for you tonight as well. So after the, after the program, we'd love for you to come up here um, and collect your certificate. Uh, it's a very, very small token of our appreciation. We wish we could do a whole lot more because all of you uh, are what make this program so successful. So thank you so much for all of our nominating teachers and mentors as well. All right, let's get into the good stuff. We want to take some time now uh, to uh, recognize all of our young people tonight, all of our Salute to Youth and Youth Hall of Fame uh, inductees. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with how the program works, we have different categories uh, that we're going to go through each, and each of these young people were nominated um, in a different category. And then throughout those categories, we have um, a very special award for our overall categorical achiever uh, in that area. So uh, all of our young people, uh, our board of directors, they receive all of these resumes and applications uh, from the mentors and from the teachers, and then they review all of those. And I have to say first, uh, first and foremost is that they're extremely impressive. Uh, I wish I could read each and every single bio that came in here, but we would be here for 16 more days. So we're not going to do that. But what we are going to do is we're going to go through each of these categories. I'm going to name off the categorical achiever for that area. Um, we're not going to call all of the names for each individual category. For instance, in our first category, we had 16 nominees for one category alone, which is really quite incredible. So I'm going to let you know how many people were nominated for, per category, and then we're going to call up our categorical achiever and uh, our Miss California State and our Miss Teen, uh, our Miss Teen Ambassadors, sorry, I, I, I got stopped in the middle of what I was talking about, uh, are going to uh, present you with some special things and then we're going to do some photos as well. Uh, but we're going to try to move through these um, and then on to our James J. Guido Awards as well. Our first category for the evening is volunteerism. Our volunteer, volunteerism category had a total of 16 nominees. And the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Antonio Nazario. Woo! 
Okay. Also, in our, pro in our program books, you can see each of the individual categories, and you can see all of the people who are nominated uh, for those individual categories okay, as well. We go. One, two, three. Um, very nice. Oh, oh, oh my god. Put it on. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. Do it again. There we go. Hold it. Hold it. Next up, we have the uh, Lonnie Tonesville Scholarship for Community Service category. Um, there are 18 nominees in this category. I want you to think about that for one second. Community service, and we have 18 different deserving individuals from this county who have been exemplary in giving back to their communities. I think that in itself is pretty darn incredible. Um, our $100 scholarship goes to the Categorical Achievers. It's a tie. And guess what? Each of them are going to get the same $100 scholarship. Uh, so big round of applause for Kayla Katzman and Ronak Verdi. I was doing some walk-up music. Congratulations, guys. Okay, Our next uh, category is the Kimberly Worth Scholarship for okay, Youth in Leadership category. In the Youth in Leadership category, we had 26 nominees. How great is that? And the $100 scholarship is going to go to the Categorical Achiever. It's a tie. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. It's a three-way tie. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? Mind blown on that one. It's a three-way tie, each getting a $100 scholarship. Big round of applause for Arsenio Manuel and Craig Miller and David Soriano Jr. Congratulations to our youth and leadership recipients. Great job, guys. Our next category up here is going to be sports, our sports category. In our sports category, there were 18 nominees. Got some athletes out there, huh? Yeah. They were like, I don't know, do we? <laughs> we have 18, apparently. The $100 scholarship is going to go to the Categorical Achiever. Say it with me. It's a tie. <laughs> this time it's a two-way tie. But each getting a $100 scholarship. We're going to run out of scholarships at this rate. This is incredible. Everybody's tying. Big round of applause for Kelly Quaylar and DeMont Hardnett. <laughs> Everybody also make sure you come out to the Charlie Wiedemeyer football game this yes. okay, in, in July. Make sure you come out, see DeMont play. Because now we're all sort of DeMont's friends, right? Yeah. So, so he's going to get his tickets. Everybody. It's my Oprah moment. You're going to the football game, and you're going to the football game. And you're playing in the football game. You're welcome, Duan. <laughs> All right, next up we have the Lorraine Palmer Scholarship for Youth Peer Role Model. What, what an incredible category, Youth Peer Role Model. And in this category, we have 25 nominees. This is pretty incredible. The $100 scholarship goes to the Categorical Achievers. It's a tie. <laughs> it's a three-way tie. <laughs> 
And you know what? Not only is it a three-way tie, but it's a triplet tie. Three-way tie, each getting $100. Samantha Rudd, Stephanie Rudd, Cindy Rudd. Pretty proud parents back there, don't we? Yeah, mom and dad. You guys, you guys proud of these girls? What an incredible, what an incredible category! First of all, youth and youth and peer role modeling is something that's so hard to come by in our high school these days. And and these three sisters, all three, congratulations to the Rudd sisters. Thank you guys so much. Way to go! Next up, we have. The Regina Dark Scholarship for Academic Achievement category. Um, 27 nominees in this category. And the $100 Academic Scholarship goes to the Categorical, uh, categorical Achiever. Say it with me. Yeah. No, Brian Tran. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Tran? I got him there. <laughs> Next up we have a category that I never would have been eligible for. It is the science category. First of all, I'm glad to see they're still teaching science. Like that's, a, that's still a thing. That's great. <laughs> Because I'll tell you what, science is hard. We had 10 nominees in this category, and uh, the $100 science scholarship is going to go to the categorical achiever. It's a three-way tie, each getting a $100 scholarship for Dora Cisneros, Gina Gilson, and Jack Jacelyn Gasol. Are you guys all sitting at the same table? Did you guys carpool? Did you talk about science in the car? You're here with your science teacher? You're the science teacher? Big round of applause for the science teacher. Science is hard. That is so incredible. One, two, three. You know what else is hard is math. Our next category is the math category. So I told you, I told you guys my, my wife teaches at Leland. She's, she's an AP statistics math teacher. Yeah. She's like cray smart. And she's purdy. Sorry. In the math category, there were five nominees, and the $100 math scholarship is going to go to the categorical achiever, Min Ho Park. Oh, hey, my wife taught you math. They just mastered. Oh. She tries to teach me math, too. Next up is chemistry, our chemistry category. We had two nominees in the chemistry category. You know why? Chemistry is hard. <laughs> the one, I'm sorry. The $100 scholarship is gonna go to the categorical achiever for chemistry, Kevin Dam. Man, Kevin is like, he look, he's got a dapper suit on, too. He's like, he's got, he's got the JT thing going on. 
as I got my suit and tie. <laughs> oh, yeah, no tie. Next up, we have our creative writing category. There were five nominees in the category of creative writing, and the $100 creative writing scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Sarah Phillips. Hey, Sarah, I'm actually writing a... a I'm writing a soap opera if you want to help out. <laughs> she obviously didn't want to. Uh, next up we have cultural understanding. Our cultural understanding category. There were nine nominees. The $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever. We have a two-way tie. Brianna Betancourt and Jacob Gagarin. <laughs> We have our organizational involvement category. We have four nominees in this category, and the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever. Again, we have a two-way tie, each getting a $100 scholarship. Please congratulate uh, Marisha Subia and Cassandra Villicana. <laughs> You know, also, uh, some of these awards are named after some individuals, and while we don't have the time to take to tell you about the contributions of each of these individuals, uh, they've all done so much, not only for this program, but uh, for their individual communities, whether it be through service or whether it be through scholastic uh, achievements or giving back um, through our scholarship, scholarship programs in different ways. So uh, all of these individuals, we, we owe a huge uh, debt of gratitude. Uh, which is why these scholarships are named after them. Next we have the Patricia Seymour Scholarship for Humanitarian Contribution category. <coughs> Excuse me, there were four nominees in this category and the $100 scholarship uh, goes to the categorical achiever uh, Yvette yeah. Admasu. <laughs> Next up we have the Edmund, Edna May Thompson Scholarship for Religious Contribution category. There were five nominees in this category and the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achievers. There was a two-way tie. Each getting a $100 scholarship, please congratulate and welcome Nathan Park and Spencer Davis. Next up, we have the Robert Romero Scholarship for the Graphic Arts category. Graphic Arts, some future Pixar guys out there. Won't you please welcome, uh, we have three nominees for this category. Won't you please welcome our $100 scholarship uh, recipient and the categorical achiever is Russell Escalada. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> Graphic arts. It's awesome. Hey, I'm working on a soap opera. <laughs> next up we have <laughs> next up we have our vocational education category. Congratulations. This one was a real nail biter, I'll tell you that much. The vocational educational 
uh, the vocational education category. We we had one nominee, and it was I mean it was close. But the one hundred dollars scholarship is going to go to the categorical achiever Tim uh, Sakala. I'll tell you what, just because there was one nominee in the category, um, you know, in, in no way undermines the incredible contribution uh, in that area. Um, it really just means that everybody else was scared to enter. That's what it means, first of all. But um, I wish you guys could read the bios of each and every, I, I think you can actually, I think they're in the book. So, um, you know, please, you know, just because we have one nominee uh, does not in any way undermine the considerable contribution uh, that these young people made. You know, this next award is uh, the Eddie Chong Scholarship uh, for Photography. And Eddie Chong is somebody that I do want to talk about because he used to be our uh, in-house uh, photographer for Youth Focus. Um, and he passed away um, when I was uh, still pretty young. But uh, I remember Eddie and all that he brought to this organization. He was a fantastic photographer. So uh, this award in his name, the Eddie Chung Scholarship for Photography category. There is one nominee and the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Kyle Blow. Yeah. Our next category is journalism. In journalism, there was one nominee, and the $100 scholarship is going to go to the categorical achiever, Nishant Subramanian. When he says it is really cool. Nishant, can you say it for me? Say your last name. Subramanian. That's what I said. <laughs> Supermonium. You know what though? Look, they misspelled it. There's an S there. Are you looking? Are you, are you looking? I'm pointing at this. Look, they, they put an S. That's not right. No, it's not right. That's, that's why I messed it up. All right. Makes sense. I, I typed these. <laughs> Next up, we have our Youth in Government category. There were two nominees in this category, and the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, uh, Christian Van Egyck. Van Egyck. Congratulations. Next up, we have the Robotics. Robotics category. That's a category? Robotics? That's awesome. We have the robotics category and we have three nominees in the robotics category. Uh, the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Novia Wong. I think this next category is also very, very important, especially in today's society, and especially um, in our schools today. Um, I, I really just think that this, this one is such a, uh, an important thing for, for all of us, um, and to make sure that we are consistently doing this in our world. Uh, this next one is promoting positive body image category. Um, you know, just with everything that our teens have to deal with today, uh, you know, body image should not be um, something that they struggle with. So promoting positive body image is such an important category. We have two nominees in this category, uh, and I wish I could just give them all scholarships. You know what? I can give them all scholarships. The $100 scholarship goes to Kimberly Vernon and yeah. Selma Higgab. Yeah. That, that was like that was a little more Ellen than Oprah. Uh, but that was that, yeah. All right, our next one is family life contribution category, and the one hundred dollars scholarship is going to go to the categorical achiever Jennifer Avalar. What's that? Victoria Avalar? 
Oh, see, they spelled it wrong because they put a they put a Jennifer. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm not making that up. It says Jennifer. I'm gonna do it again. Hold on, Victoria, go sit down. No, 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 Victoria, start walking up because you're way in the back. <laughs> Our family life contribution yeah. category: the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Victoria yeah. Avalar. Yeah. Victoria was like, I don't know who Jennifer is, but she stole my award <laughs> and my name. Next up, we have our inspirational category. Uh, we have four nominees in this category, and the $100 inspirational scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Joyce Yin. because you thought that was hilarious. Oh. How about one more big round of applause for Joyce Yin. Congratulations, Joyce. You know, I have, I really want to, I have a, a bit of an argument that I'm going to have with this next person because this is, um, this next person is uh, the recipient of our speech and debate category. So, um, that was, don't laugh at that, that was a horrible joke. I'm literally judging you for laughing at that, don't do it. In the speech and debate category, we had two nominees and the $100 community, uh, oh, hold on. Speech and debate category, we have two nominees, and the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Stacy Lou. <laughs> Next up, we have the mock trial category, our future lawyer in the room. We have one nominee. The $100 scholarship is going to go to the Categorical Achiever, Sanu Chui. <laughs> the only thing I can say about this next person is that they are very tenacious. In the tenacity category, we have two nominees. The $100 scholarship is going to go to the Categorical Achiever, Francisco Yanez. The only thing I can say about this next person is that they're very compassionate. In the compassion category, we have two nominees. And the $100 scholarship is going to go to the Categorical Achiever, Romel Jimenez. <laughs> Our next category is the Ed Vargas Scholarship for Agricultural... For Agriculture... Category we have two nominees in this category, and the only thing that I can say about this person is that their name is Ricardo Duenas. Yeah. Uh. Congratulations, Ricardo, recipient of a one hundred dollars scholarship as the categorical achiever in agriculture. Ricardo, what college are you going to go to? Uh, Stanford University. Did you guys hear that? 
I asked Ricardo what college he's going to go to, and he said, um, Stanford University. Congratulations, Stanford. You know what you have to be to get into Stanford? Smart. You know why? Stanford is hard. All right, next up we have the environmental category. We have some nominees for this category. The $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Eric Snyder. You know, talk about somebody else, somebody who uh, gave back to the community through the performing arts. And this next award is named uh, after her, the Benny Smith Scholarship for the Performing Arts Theater category. We had three nominees, and the $100 scholarship goes to the categorical achiever, Katherine Allen. <laughs> Catherine, do you sing or do you act or both? Both, okay. We'd like you to actually uh, sing your um, acceptance speech, please. Okay, here we go. Hold it. One, two, three. I'm serious. We would like you to do that. We don't have time, but we'd like for it to happen. <laughs> Next up, um, again, somebody else who uh, contributed so much in the areas of arts, uh, specifically through dance, um, and also someone. Uh, who gave so much to this Youth Focus program and to the community as a whole. Uh, the Alice Faye Myers uh, Scholarship for the Performing Arts. Uh, someone who's near and dear to all of our hearts, Alice Faye Myers. But uh, Scholarship for the Performing Arts in the Dance category. We had four nominees and the $100 scholarship goes to the Categorical Achiever, Mithil Chakraborty. <laughs> Now wait, I, I, had to, I had to double take because I, I actually saw his name and then I looked back up and I was like, this is the dance category. You dance too? You do? Dude. Hey, you wanna, you wanna go hang out later? Like, we'll go. He's so cool, man. I need, I need friends. No, there was, there was a period after that sentence. I need friends. That's it. Uh, another individual who's given back so much through performing arts, the Tom Tomasello Scholarship uh, for the Performing Arts uh, in the Instrumental category. We haven't said it in a while. Say it with me now. It's a tie. The $100 scholarship goes to the instrumental categorical achievers, Taylor Kunkel and Aku Sorensen. <laughs> what do you guys play? What instruments? Violin and flute and piano. Okay, what do you play? Clarinet and alto sax. I've always, thought, I've always wanted to play the saxophone. I thought that was so cool. Okay, here we go. One, two, and three. Hey, Mithel, can you also play the saxophone? <laughs> no? I'm so shocked. All right. Uh, the Winifred Thompson uh, Scholarship for the Advancement of the Arts Behind the Scenes category. Uh, we have two nominees in this category, uh, and won't you please welcome the $100 scholarship uh, goes to the categorical achiever, Jennifer Barreto. We're now going to go on to the 
$250, Suzette Galloway. For those of you who don't know Suzette Galloway, she's on the board of directors of Youth Focus. Where is Mrs. G? She's down there. What's that? Oh, is this not what I'm supposed to open? It says open envelope. What other envelope? I don't know. That's what Maddie handed me. It said open this. Oh, that's the scholarship? Oh. <laughs> Andrea. Hey, big round of applause for Andrea, everybody. <laughs> Speaking of Mrs. Galloway. There isn't an envelope. Mrs. Galloway, where are my envelopes? No, but there's not one for most inspirational. Nope. All right, I know who wins. I know who wins because it says it right here. I'll just do it from that. I got it. Anyways, back to my story. Mrs. Galloway right here, she does a little bit of everything for Youth Focus Incorporated. She's behind the scenes, but uh, she worked tirelessly to, to, to help put this event on this evening and is the driving force uh, behind... Um, behind tonight. So one big round of applause for that lady back there, Mrs. Suzette Galloway. So right here uh, we have a partially opened envelope. I don't know how that happened, but the $250 Suzette Galloway scholarship for the most inspirational uh, goes to Aaron Valdez. Classic Aaron, um, off inspiring people, right now. We're gonna hold this for Aaron. Yeah, I don't think Aaron's here tonight. All right, next. Can I have additional envelopes, please? I'm out of fifth alternate. The $250 James J. Guid <laughs> Guido, spirit of, oh, yeah, there you go. I'm totally caught up now, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to read a little bit about some of our next folks here, because these are our alternates to the James J. Guido uh, Spirit of Youth Scholarship. So this is the fifth alternate uh, to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Scholarship, um, and this is going to go uh, to Alyssa Foote. While Alyssa's walking up, I want to read a little about her. Alyssa is truly a unique and wonderful person whose personality and talent uh, make her an asset both, uh, both inside and outside of the English, cla English classroom. She is one of those students to whom teachers look forward to seeing each day. She is always punctual, cheerful, respectful, and eager to learn. The current senior class as a whole is quite academic, and Alyssa is one of the finest, currently ranked 18 out of 411 with an overall GPA of 4.13. I didn't know they went that high. <laughs> Alyssa, however, is not just another member of a group of excellent scholars. She's a wonderful, well-rounded student whose strong voice and phenomenal insight often drives class discussions. Alyssa has an acute understanding of life, social issues, and human nature, and her ability to effectively analyze and explain the historical and, my goodness, you are busy, girl, uh, and, and psychosocial implications concerning literature. Uh, concerning literature. Alyssa is a wonderful all-around person and student who works well independently and collaboratively. Her kindness, motivation, intellect, insight, and charisma make her a natural leader and will continue to make her a successful student and, mod and uh, a mo role model for the community. Uh, the recipient of a $250 um, scholarship uh, and the fifth alternate to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Award, uh, Alyssa Foote, everybody. Next up, we have the fourth, fourth alternate to the uh, James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Scholarship. Don't yell at me. I think I'm doing something wrong. The fourth, <laughs> our fourth alternate. Uh, this, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be secret and then try to announce it at the end. 
this person's youngest brother was diagnosed uh, with ASD, which is autism spectrum disorder, at the age of three, and he had a very strong understanding and compassion uh, for the disorder. Uh, when he was allowed to start volunteering for community service uh, hours at Raymond J. Fisher Middle School in Los Gatos, California, during his first year as a sixth grader, he immediately asked his brother's special day class teacher, uh, is it Doherty Fondur? Um, and Louise Von Meter Elementary School if she would be okay with his coming into the classroom once a week to help her with any activities. Um, he arrives every Monday and spends an hour playing and engaging with the special needs children. Every Monday is different. Sometimes he reads to the kids. Uh, sometimes he plays games with them. Sometimes he uh, helps them out on the computer. Some of these children have not been around mainstream children, so um, his social skills have been invaluable. Um, to these kids. He's already logged 20 hours of service and plans to complete the year with a total of 30 hours. Because of his experience with his brother, he's incredibly patient uh, when most peers couldn't be bothered. He has maintained a 4.0 GPA so far uh, in his sixth grade year. He's a member of Science Olympiad and competed with his classmates in March uh, at Bay Area uh, Science Olympiad competition. Uh, at Cal State East Bay in Hayward. Science is his passion and he plans to enroll in a number of science camps this summer. Uh, he's also a Boy Scout uh, with Troop 2, where do you find the time? Uh, and will attend a week-long summer camping trip uh, in Wincy, California in July. He earned his first merit badge uh, for disabilities awareness. Um, obviously somebody who uh, has a big heart um, and gives back. Why don't you give a big round of applause to Donovan Dix. Once again, he's the fourth alternate to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Award. He's the recipient of a $250 scholarship. He's in the sixth grade. Donovan Dix, big round of applause. Next up, we have the third alternate to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Scholarship. It's a $250 scholarship as well. This next young lady is an inspiration and an overcomer. Uh, she is somewhat shy and has worked to defeat her shyness. At Heart Academy, she boldly goes up to people she does not know and introduces herself. She has great compassion for others and has overcome this difficulty to get where she is while always thinking of others. Courage is needed when singing in front of people, and this person has done this several times uh, in the past couple of years. She has a th not only does she have a 3.9 GPA, but that's not what characterizes her and not how she wants to make a mark in this world. She desires to make a difference by working with children with special needs. She will intertwine this passion with other passions for languages, including sign language, music, art, and animals. She is also a brown slash black belt in karate. Dang, Gina. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't going to say her name, but it's like, how many black belts are there out there? Yeah, it's just Gina. <laughs> are you a black belt? Yeah. Are you Gina? <laughs> What are the odds that there's more than one black belt in the room? Me too. Yeah, there's a couple. Seriously? <laughs> All right, I'm going to get a lesson. Character defines Gina. She is very perceptive and pays attention to things that are important to people. Uh, from learning how to play her papa's favorite uh, song on the saxophone to making that extra special card for a family member or a friend that is extremely personalized. Uh, she portrayed hu humility when her brother was in uh, the hospital by reaching out to her friends to pray for him. Uh, service to God is a part of her life. Uh, this is her sixth year volunteering for children's liturgy at her church. In addition to that, she volunteers for a children's camp in the summer, helps a special education class, and loves to pray for her community at Heart Academy. The vocal director, Jessica Allen, is very thankful for Gina in figuring out the piano playing harmonies in the several of the youth theater project production. Gina represents all the characteristics her, nominee, uh, her nominators aspire to see in a young woman. 
Her life is an inspiration to all who meet her. Gina will live a unique life meant specially to bless uh, many more people wherever she goes. Uh, she's the recipient of a $250 scholarship, the third alternate to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Award. Please welcome Gina Marshana. You know, I told, I told you that there are some uh, exceptional young people in this room tonight, and this is just a small glimpse of them, but that's why we want to go through and read these because, um, I mean, the, the things that these young people are doing in their communities is pretty special. Uh, next up, we have the second alternate to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Scholarship. Uh, this, young man is an ex, uh, is an am this young man is an amazing young man uh, who delights in serving others uh, and giving of his time and talents. He has been a terrific role model uh, as he has cheerfully served others. He serves his community through a youth leader at both Venture Christian Church and South Hills Community Church. Uh, he also helped rebuild the front porch of Almaden Neighborhood Church uh, and brought dinner to single pregnant women at Heritage Home during the holidays. He has also been involved with Joni and Friends, spending one-on-one -on -one time with Special Needs Child for a week over the summer. He also plans to bring uh, the Ride for Cancer to his community. Uh, they will ride skateboards from De Anza College to Stanford University and hope, wow, that's a long ride on a skateboard. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. <laughs> In hopes that they will raise funds to continue to fight against cancer. I'll give you money for that. Right. Find me. Uh, he has also had a passion for creative art. He plays the piano, ukulele, uh, and this other instrument that sounds cool. And also sings with the worship team at South... I don't know what that instrument is. And also sings with the worship team at South Hills Community Church. He also has a gift when it comes to writing. He writes his own poetry and lyrics to songs. He also loves art. He has a unique approach to using art as a reflection of emotions, and a, his preferred medium is the pencil. Each year, he harvests 150 to 200 pounds of fruit. Seriously? You just harvest fruit. That's incredible. His family uses the fruit to make dozens of gallons of jams and juices. He also started working in harvesting honey. Of course he did. He, <laughs> He got started on honey because his Russian grandfather had experienced being a beekeeper in Russia and passed on the trade to him, I don't want to say his name, orchards needed uh, bees for pollination. Uh, the bees serve not only to pollinate his crops, but the bees also serve to provide a large harvest of honey as well. He harvests about 10 gallons of honey per year. That's really, I mean, all that was super cool. I don't know if you guys thought so, but they're going to ride the skateboards for cancer from De Anza to Stanford and then he makes fruit and honey incredible he's the recipient of a $250 James J. Guido Spirit of U uh, second alternate to the title of, to the James J. Guido Spirit of U scholarship the recipient of a $250 scholarship big round of applause for Alex Sukala I gotta, I gotta shake your hand dude. incredible incredible There was a part of that when I when I was like, Did it hold it? it's gonna say just kidding at some point. He also makes honey. I mean, am I? I'm not wrong, right? That's. You know, like he like he harvests a ton of fruit. He's got this skate. I'm serious. Call me about the skateboard thing. I'll totally sponsor somebody riding in that thing. I'm, that's so awesome. All right, next up, we have the first alternate uh, to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Scholarship. In case I haven't mentioned earlier, James J. Guido is right over there. This next person's life embodies perseverance. Uh, he has overcome many medical trials, such as severe asthma, a bone hip disease at fi for five years, reconstructive hip surgery, and physical therapy. In addition, he has uh, conquered dyslexia uh, through tutoring and hard work, 
And this is evident as he passes uh, the CHSPE high school equivalency exam early and did well enough on his SATs to gain early acceptance and an academic scholarship to Biola University uh, this year. Despite all of his physical difficulties, yeah, absolutely, round of applause for that. <laughs> Biola is another fantastic university. Uh, despite all of his physical difficulties that he's experienced for the past 12 years, uh, he has chosen to work hard to have a full life by doing hikes, sports, social activities, and service, uh, even when he was fully disabled and on crutches. He never missed a beat in school while well, is recovering uh, for six months from his extensive hip reconstruction last year. <clears throat> he has worked very hard for the last four years in developing the study skills and academic requirements to be successful in his college prep classes and testing so that he could reach his dream of going to a four-year college. He has invested hours each day to do extra work in order to reach this goal. Kindness is also that is uh, tested by his friends and he is always willing to be friendly to those without friends. He always notices the kid who is not talking to anyone and will go over and spend time with that child. In addition, he serves his friends by displaying bravery, perseverance, and kindness to the outcast. But I think the time that really stands out is when he volunteered to be a crew leader in his Boy Scout troop for a very rigorous 100-mile canoeing trip through the boundary waters of Minnesota and Canada. Josh <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I got like really wrapped up in that. <laughs> this young man has gone uh, had gone on this trip as a younger scout and was looking forward to a more challenging trip with older scouts. Uh, this trip was just eight months from his reconstructive hip surgery, and he had been working diligently in therapy to be able to get cleared to go. He was cleared and signed up to lead as a crew chief with his many friends uh, from the year being in the trip. For this. Uh, he was asked to uh, lead a group of younger, less experienced kids on the trip instead of the cool kids. The cool kids. I was never one of those, but... <laughs> it was difficult for him to give up what would uh, be his last fun trip with the scouts and friends and instead serve a group of kids who would not necessarily be much fun. He did it with courage, compassion, and in the end, he led his group successfully through a challenging trip. He showed great maturity, integrity, compassion, and ultimately that he wished to serve others. He exemplifies humility and heart for serving others. He understands sacrifice. He's outstanding in the area of volunteerism. Amidst this busy life, he has had a part-time a part job as a cashier at Chick-fil-A and maintains a 3.6 grade point average. He will be taking community college courses at CLEP to, uh, tests to also offset college costs. He's become a budding opera singer, wanting to pursue a degree in music along with sociology. His passion in social justice to defend the innocent and helpless by combating trafficking and slavery uh, through, an organizational, through an organization called Inter International Justice Mission. His life is an inspiration to all who meet him. I, I've never met this young man. And I can tell by reading this, as I was reading it, I was thinking about all of the times in my life when I gave up on something. And I said that that's too hard, so I'm not gonna push through. Um, this is somebody who does not do that. And uh, it's truly an honor uh, to welcome up uh, the first alternate to the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Scholarship Award recipient of a $250 scholarship. Please give a big round of applause to Joshua Burke. Yeah. Now, of course, we have our James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Award. Before I read this, too, can we just uh, have one more big collective round of applause for all of our young people tonight? You know, I, I, I truly can't wait to see all the difference that you're going to make in the world and in your communities and in your schools. And uh, I truly do hope that just like Piyush came back to us tonight, 
um, and hopefully inspired you with his journey. I hope that you'll come back here in the future and inspire others with yours. I cannot wait to see uh, what's going to come out of this room in the future. Uh, the recipient of the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Award is an outstanding all-around student excelling and winning numerous local and national awards in several areas. She has loved science from a young age and has demonstrated creativity. Because she contributes to her school in a positive willingness and leadership manner, she, uh, she received the School Computer Department Award in 2013. Most noteworthy has been her commitment to science. She has spent hundreds of hours in the lab uh, for the challenging real world problems. She received the Most Intuitive Scientist Award by the school. Her science impact is not limited to the school campus. Her environmental water project was the only California-made school project selected by the 2012 uh, Siemens Weekend Bridge the World Challenge. Her food safety project, a science project, a novel and safe fruit and vegetable wash, won first place in the 2013 Synopsis Silicon Valley Science and Technology Championship, the fourth place in microbiology, really? Microbiology, a California State Science Fair, and a 2013 Young Naturalist Award semifinalist by American Museum of Natural History. She said, it is important to me that my projects can be a part of the efforts to prevent water pollution and foodborne illnesses. Uh, despite, the, uh, despite her Herculean record of activity, uh, she still maintains an outstanding 4.0 overall grade point average uh, in the past three years from 2010 to 2013 in Redwood Middle School. Uh, she's, uh, her accomplishments have not gone unnoticed. She has been named for 4.0 honor rolls, uh, the highest regular academic award conferred by the school. Saratoga, Uni uh, Saratoga Union School District has hon honored her with the Outstanding Achievement Award. Um, her superior science performance has enabled her to be selected to the Saratoga City Council major commemoration for achievement in the science fair. What does not show on paper is that she is also a friendly, easygoing person uh, despite her incredible level of accomplishment at such, such a young age. Her efforts have indeed impacted the community. Uh, there's so much that these young people are doing in here and this person is um, definitely an example of all that scholastically. Um, and giving back to those around her. So uh, based on that, the James J. Guido Spirit of Youth Award and the title of Salute to Youth, Youth Hall of Fame Ambassador, along with a $1,000 uh, scholarship. Won't you please join me in welcoming Michelle Chu. You know, I'm so, uh, every year, this is, this is my favorite thing that we do every year, uh, because I, you know, I walk out of here uh, 10 times more inspired um, than, than when I came in. Um, and hopefully each, each and every one of you are inspired by those around you, you're inspired by your peers, uh, hopefully your mentors are inspired to go back and to continue investing um, in the lives uh, of others. You know, for all of you in this room, um, this, is, this is one moment in your life. Uh, this is one moment, um, it, it, this is one moment in time, um, essentially, and you have the ability to shape the future. Um, you have the ability uh, to change the world. Um, and, you know, we have Maddie's gonna actually sing for us right now as we wrap up this evening. And I want you to listen to the words of this song because uh, the title of the song is One Moment in Time, and it's about this moment right now, but what I want you to focus on is creating this moment um, for other people in our community, for other people in your schools, uh, and giving back to those individuals. A big round of applause for all of our young people tonight. Maddie, why don't you come up and sing for us to close the evening. As Maddie sings this theme song that we've used every year since the beginning of Salute to Youth, I'd like our young people, 
um, all of our young people to come up for a group photo and stand with her as she sings this in your honor. Will you do that for me? But you need to move quickly. <laughs> Thank you. Come on.
Stand there, stand in front of Stand there, stand in front of One second, one second, one second. One second. Mr. S wanted to say something. Mr. S, what do you want to say? He's getting there. That's what he wanted to say. We have a much more important message. Young people, um, yeah. we have congratulated you all tonight. We have rewarded you with rewards. And I want you to always remember as you go through your educational journey and your lifelong career in education, that there may be moments when you get discouraged. There may be moments that you don't really feel valued and appreciated. And I want you to be able to reflect back upon this evening and this moment to encourage you and to inspire you to continue on in your life's endeavors. It's so important that you realize that you are appreciated and valued because there will be those little pits in your life when you think, oh, I don't measure up, I'm not good enough, and that's not coming from anybody that really loves you. That's coming from those discouraging moments in your life when you think, you know what? It's not worth it. And just know that it is worth it. And that whether you received <clears throat> a medallion tonight or not, that's only a symbol of something that we achieve as we go through life. And if you did not receive one, you are no less in importance and in value. And just know that that isn't the important thing in life. Remember, this was a moment in time for those that receive their achievement awards. But it doesn't mean that you are any less. And there will be a time in your life when you will receive an award and somebody else will not. And that's part of life's story. But if you did not receive one, just know it doesn't make any difference. You go home as a valued part of this program and that we love you and we appreciate you and we value you before more than any words could ever share with you. So go home filled with value and love and know that this evening was your evening and you shared in it. All right? God bless you. With that, to all of our parents, our mentors, all of our students, we want to say thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you for being a part of the 2013 Santa Clara County Salute to Youth Equality Awards Night. I know. Parents, if you.